We made a thing. Roll the titles. Hello, Internet. This is an In Your House comedy production featuring Big D, Joseph Johnson, Rory Jones, Juliana Hank, Georgie Morrell, Jeff Singh. Welcome to KD's Comedy Quarantine. Here is your host, KD Hinken. That's me. Welcome everyone to episode one, the only episode, I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but this is KD's Comedy Quarantine, I'm KD. I think it's important at the start of the show to say thank you to those people that have been there for us and continue to be there for us day after day during this crisis, so from everyone here and from everyone outside watching everyone, I just want to say Pornhub. Thank you for all your service. We we all, as a nation, appreciate this. We really do. Wait, so who are we clapping for on a Thursday then in that case? Oh, okay. That that makes more sense, actually. I suppose they do deserve it. And Pornhub's a close second, though, in all fairness. There's no one there. I'm on my own. Oh, by myself. I'm like fully quarantined ready, I am. Look. I got, well actually, my quarantine started off by somehow managing to pop my eardrum and then get infected. This is not, just to clarify, if I'm too loud, too quiet, I don't know, I can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> In the land of social distancing, the antisocial bastard rules. Well, okay. <laughs> that and serial killers, but it's probably best not to think about that too much. Yeah, don't think about that, we're not going to help you. And the home invasion ones as our home invaders. Maybe we should just stop this, com this conversation. Yeah. We can't try and ignore what's going on. It'd be wrong to make a show like this and not make a point about what's going on. We all know about the coronavirus stuff that's going on about COVID. So of course, one of the best ways we could probably take a look at this whole situation in a language that everybody understands is memes. So I have my five favourite memes, my five favourite coronavirus related memes that I'm going to share with you. Okay, first up. Yeah, I, I love this one straight away. <laughs> uh, Boris Johnson, you can only go for one walk a day. Proclaimers, sing no more. For anyone that isn't aware, the proclaimers are the ones that sing the song Well I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more You know what, if you're too young to know that, you should not be watching this program Go to bed so, But tell your parents to watch it, tell your parents, definitely and Max, if you're watching this, or TJ, my children Go to bed, <laughs> stop it Unless it's 10 in the morning when you're watching it then Hey guys. Next one. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really need to explain anything about this one, do I? <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah. Next one, I guess. In that case, there's nothing really to say about that. I feel like anything I will say will probably get me in trouble, so. Number three. Oh, this is one that, um, this one was great. This is one that uh, my mate sent me, who's an essential employee, uh, works not in a bank, but doing like debt help and all that kind of stuff, and working with credit cards, that kind of thing, you know. And people need that, they don't understand that that's an essential thing, but it is. Um, yeah, I love this. It's not, how does it feel being an essential employee? It's not just, I don't know why I love it so much, it's just Rambo covered in muck. It's like, oh, oh. <laughs> I can completely can imagine that everyone in the NHS now feels exactly like that. Or oh, sorry, exactly like that. So yeah, I love it. <laughs> Alright then, we're almost at the end. There's two more, two more, because I'm gonna bring these, I'm gonna have a whole new lot for you on the next episode. So I didn't want to include too many. I've got a hell of a lot, don't get me wrong, like I'm sure all you do. 
So actually, that's a good point. Anyone watching this think, oh, I've got a better meme that I've seen than that. Send it me. Send it me straight away, man. Actually, just, just find me on Facebook. Just find me on Facebook, man. Just um, look for Carl Hink. There's Carl Hink. Anywho. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> this one. This one almost became my favourite one, in all honesty, because I'm a horrible person. But it didn't. It fell out of the top mark. But let me find it for you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Italian made out. We can't make bodies fast enough to keep up with the coronavirus. Germany. I don't know. Don't know why I'd be saying that. It's not like they went to war twice with the whole world. Stuff stuck to my board. Ah. But I love that one, though, it's great. But it in no way compares to my favourite one. I love this one. I saw you straight away. I still laugh every time I see it. Here you go. <laughs> I love this. I fucking love this. <laughs> I like my COVID like I like my women. 19 and easily spread. <laughs> and what makes it even better? There's no need, no need whatsoever for a nurse to be in the picture. It doesn't, it, there's nothing to do with nurses, but it just makes it so much better. I, I love it. <laughs> it's great. It's making me genuinely laugh again now, just looking at it. I can't even see it right now, and I'm thinking about it. You can see it there. I can't see it. It's not magic. It's magic. I don't know, whoever made that meme, thank you for your services. For your services. Introduce my next act. He's one of the guys that you watch perform and you're like, yeah, he's going to do something. He's a good guy. That's the most niceness you're ever going to get from me, Joe, so I appreciate it. But yeah, without any further ado, edu, let me introduce Mr. Joseph, Joe, Joseph Johnson. Roll it! Um, so, my second piece of audience participation involves... What is the maximum amount of time you would spend an all-inclusive holiday? Right, so you are on an all-inclusive holiday. How long is the optimal amount of time to spend there? Two weeks. Two weeks. I heard two weeks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two weeks, right? Two weeks is... All right, I need to bring that tap water up, actually. Bear with me. Really unprofessional. Sorry, could you possibly... Pass me. Oh, I was really hoping for the white one, thank you, but no worries. Um, <laughs> sorry, this gentleman... <laughs> I'm, no, I'm joking. I, there's a little play. I'm pretending to be closetly racist tonight. I'm not really. My boyfriend's black. It's fine. <laughs> oh, no, that's lovely. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, two weeks. I had two weeks. So, after the two weeks, you seem to get bored, you know? The preachers had this problem when they were selling, you know, religion to people. They would have, you know, preachers were saying, so all you need to do is follow God. And at the end of the night, at the end of the, sorry, and then your death, not the night, but whenever you die, you'll be greeted in heaven. And in heaven, you have unlimited orgasms. Oof, very nice. As much jelly and ice cream as you can have. You're Catholic, that we've got that, you, uh, see me after, we've got that too, don't worry. Um... But all you can have for all of eternity. And the Christians went, ah! You see, all of eternity. Ah, oh, heaven sounds great, but I was really hoping to get back to Scunthorpe. <laughs> but it's true, you could be in the Caribbean, you know, uh, lounging on a, on, a, on a sun lounger, and everyone around you is drinking cocktails, and you'd end up saying to your mate Dave, you know, it is nice and all, but I think I'm starting to miss the stabbings. <laughs> I'll give you an example. I went to Amsterdam for a month. Some of you who know me are going, no, he didn't. <laughs> he went for three days because that's all he could afford. <laughs> but for the purpose of this joke, I went for a month. <laughs> I went to Amsterdam for a month. Now, Amsterdam, lovely place. I didn't say country. I kept on saying Amsterdam is a country, and that is uninformed and closetly racist. Now, I went to Amsterdam. Now, Amsterdam is a lovely place, right? Lovely place. You know, there's arts and restaurants everywhere. There's no like pollution. People ride bikes. It's wonderful. But the problem with Amsterdam is it becomes a little bit too safe. Right? Get this. You can actually walk around at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. 
<laughs> People will come up to me and go, hello. I go, fuck off. <sighs> Work myself up. I just going off, oh, I think we'd better get you back to Narborough Road. <laughs> but it's not just holidays that the two week rule affects, right? It's not just holidays. You see, I've been with my girlfriend almost nine months. Oh. Oh. Way over the limit. <laughs> Way over the limit. And she asked me not to do that joke tonight, but she made the faithful error of sleeping with me before the gig. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it didn't happen? Am I nothing to you? <laughs> but, oh no, you threw me off now, Jess. I'm not going to pay us home now. Bear with me. Heckled by my own girlfriend. Won't give head, but she'll shout out on stage. Come on. <laughs> what the hell? What was I going with this? But yeah, no, this is why you see uh, all these mo uh, these famous celebrities and rappers, you know, cheating on their girlfriends with prostitutes. All right, and, and it just goes to show that I'm correct. You see, you can have mango juice and vitamin smoothies in the morning. You can have jerk chicken with pomegranate for lunch. And you can have filet mignon at night. All day, every day, at three. But at some point... You're going to want to go out and get Iceland's own scampi. <laughs> now, Jess, she, she said to me as well, she also didn't like that joke. Um, she said, well, if you want, you can go out and get Iceland scampi. <laughs> and I said, oh, hey, I already did. <laughs> so... <laughs> We had, a, we had a weird an argument with Jess, we had, um, so I thought in order to make it up to her, I'd go out and buy her something. It seems to be that, you know, the common theme, you know, you annoy her, you buy her something. So I went out and got her a dress, right? I wanted to show her that with the right clothing, lighting and makeup, she could be just more than scampy. <laughs> more than scampi. Um, now, unfortunately, as fancily and as smartly as I'm dressed tonight, I'm going to love with you, I don't actually know an awful lot about dresses. So I've got a pink one. <laughs> they like pink. Now, when I go to buy this, this dress, the lady at the shop, she tells me, oh yeah, that's a lovely dress, well done. Uh, you know, fair play, it's a plum and nice. Oh yes, it is. Thank you, pleasantries over. Um, she said, okay, well, the dress comes at a six, an eight, a ten, and a twelve. And I said, shit. <laughs> this is fourteen. She said, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, sir. We only have the dress up to a twelve. And I said, oh, no, no, sorry, you're mistaken. I said, she's fourteen, so I'll have the six, please. <laughs> <laughs> And now it's time for KD's Comedy Remote, on location. Hey guys, KD here. So what I thought I would do is I would just show you a few little tips of how to stay safe during this coronavirus pandemic and just how to take your mind off of things. But first and foremost, the most important thing, how to safely pick up from your dealer. Okay? First thing you'll need, money. Next, one, pick the other thing. Do this. Wait there. Good to go. And another one. What's this for? Follow me. Okay, phase two now. Money ready? Open the door safely. Okay? Safely. Hold right on. There we go. We've done this. We've done this. Hello, dealer person. Take your money. We can safely get high! 
And that is how you take your mind off the coronavirus. All right then. So, another great act that we just saw. Got another great act for you again. This is another guy that I've met with a few times. He's actually done uh, my podcast, so you can see the logo for it right there. And there's also some socials for it right there. There, I hope. It might be over there, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But he um, he's a Herefordshire-based comic. He's actually the promote. well, sorry, he's the um, organiser, promoter of the um, copy comedy, the copy number one comedy club shoot night. Copy number one? Is that? I'm not missing the name. That might just copy number one. He does a night at copy number one, like every Thursday. Or he did do a night at copy number one every Thursday. No one's doing anything right now. It's not supposed to be positive. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, I love this guy, man. He's a great dude. Um, he's a big teddy bear. Uh, but yeah, with no further ado, no more ado again. No more ado. No ado to you. No ado to me. Really, I got the best to do in the world. I have the best to do. Nobody to do is better than mine. Nobody to do is better. Okay, he's not bad. Okay. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> now, um, so next up, anyway, uh, we have, like I said, from Herefordshire, the runner of the co- of the coffee number one comedy night. Please welcome beautiful dude, Big D Archer. Big D Archer. It's brilliant to be here. You all enjoy yourselves. Yes. 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 Are we drinking? Yes. yes. Lovely, lovely. My name is Big D Archer, capital D, as you can tell. And it was basically Big D was a nickname given to me by my mum and all my ex-lovers. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what does the D stand for? I hear you say. Disappointment. <laughs> Disappointment. If only I had a bigger dick, then my mum would be proud of me. That's what I say. <laughs> I love my mum. I love my mum. She uh, she comes from the land down under, not Australia. Hell. <laughs> I I got all my best qualities from my mum. I'm not talking about the facial hair. <laughs> Or the diabetes. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about these bad boys here. <laughs> 36 double D's of pleasure, my Grant and Phil's. <laughs> Sorry, I can't tag them. <laughs> All right, you enjoying yourself? <laughs> my mum the other week, she bought me a bra, which I was quite impressed because it's the only support she's ever given me. <laughs> You. <laughs> I'm wearing this, I'm not wearing it now, obviously, honestly, but I was wearing this bra and I'm thinking, Mum, all I need is some sexy lingerie to pull this look off. <laughs> you know what she said? She said, don't worry, son, I'm sure your dad will lend you a pair of his. <laughs> I always wondered what my dad wore for such confidence. Hey? <laughs> Terrible. I, I'm happily married, yes. She's dead. No, I'm not joking. I'm only joking. I'm a, I'm a big believer if you truly love something, you should hold on to it. That's why she's locked in the basement. <laughs> At least until her parents pay the ransom. <laughs> now, I'm a, I'm a big believer in first impressions. First impressions. And my, my wife's first impression of me was when I fell out the window and landed on her. <laughs> Wait for it. You could say I was her first big crush. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but when she was out of that wheelchair, we started dating. And uh, my, my wife fell for that classic rumour that men with big feet have big dicks. God, the look of disappointment in her face. Oh, it was terrible. But you work with what God gave you, don't you? You know? So what do you do? You strap on a condom round those feet, don't ya? <laughs> it brings whole new meaning to doing the hokey cokey, doesn't it? Yeah, but your yeah, left foot in, left foot out, in, out, oh, I'm done. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, my wife asked me the other week, she goes, if I sit on your face, will you sit on my face? It's like, no, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing that. Because if you sit on my face, It'll be breathtaking. 
but if I sit on yours, it'll be live taken. <laughs> my, my, wife, uh, my wife is a policewoman, or sorry, police officer, and uh, she takes her job way too seriously. And no, no more or less, when we first had sex for the first time, I was hanging down around the vagina area, trying to figure out where things were. And uh, she tried to do me for loitering. <laughs> loitering! Like I'm some weirdo hanging around on a street corner, or cul-de-sac in this case, you know? <laughs> the worst thing was, the worst thing was when the condom broke, and she tried to do me for breaking and entering. <laughs> that was wide open down there, the door, front door was wide open. The back door on the other hand was locked tight. So. <laughs> I want to I'll tell you what. Having sex with my wife, this is a good one, having sex with my wife is like listening to an old record player. If I don't like the sound she's making, I can always flip her over and listen to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! Alright, I'm going to try my first political joke. Here we go. Sex with my wife is like becoming PM. A lot of over-promising to get in. Once you're in, you make a lot of noise, let a lot of people down, and then when you're out, you realise you fucked up. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> I can't believe that one works, cheers. <laughs> my, uh, my wife's on a diet at the moment, which means I'm on a diet. And where before, when you were a kid, you were hiding porn from your mum, you're now having to hide Jaffa cakes from your wife. It's terrible. But <laughs> I've been on this diet for about three weeks, and the worst thing was I started getting Get Well Soon cards. <laughs> Wait for it. Of KFC. <laughs> Oh, it's a shame. But I've had to be more creative about getting treats into the shopping basket, okay? So I came up with a great idea. I'm gonna put Kit Kats in her tampon box, right? It's a great idea, try it. Just remember to take it out before her first period. <laughs> oh, I forgot. She was screaming at me, screaming at me. I said, whoa, whoa, take a break, take a break. <laughs> So take a break. It's not the first time you've had two fingers inside you. <laughs> it could have been worse. It could have been a whisper bar, and that would have been careless, okay? <laughs> she goes, have you hit... Okay, okay. Have you hit any more chocolate? I said, yes, okay. I, I put some chocolate in the loo roll. She says, that's clever. I said, no, Smarties. <laughs> Yeah, where was I? <laughs> so uh, I want to tell you a story tonight. Um, my wife, the other week, was late for work, and she was uh, trying to find a truncheon ready for work. There was a bit of a ceremony going on, and I was help, trying to help her find it. I was upstairs, she was downstairs, I was going through all the cupboards. And then I looked under the bed, and there was this thing underneath the bed, this huge black thing smiling at me. It wasn't Chris Akabusi. <laughs> So I pulled, I pulled it out and popped it onto the bed. And what can only be described as Mr. T's arm of a dildo. It was incredible! <laughs> uh, this thing had been through some rough times, though. It looked like it had been through two tours of Iraq and come back with PTSD. Oh. Wait for it. At one point, I pressed the button. It started having a breakdown and shaking. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I couldn't believe it. It's, it's incredible. But my wife shouts up the stairs, if you found my truncheon yet? I, I, I found something. And all I could think was, is this what she's using now on the force? You know, a corpse running around with dildos. <laughs> I got this image of the long arm of the law just got a whole lot longer. <laughs> it brings new word meaning to the words copper on the beat, doesn't it? I just thought all these coppers running around with pump actions. You know, it's terrible. So I thought, you know, I'm going to carry this downstairs. So I chucked it on my shoulder and walked down like Arnie from Commando. Went downstairs and I slapped on the kitchen table. It didn't break, it didn't buckle, it was fine. And the wife was looking at me and goes, her face went from white to beetroot like that. And her mouth dropped open so wide, I could have reinserted this bad boy. <laughs> I goes, can you explain this? She goes, well, sometimes I've got an itch that needs a scratch. An itch that needs scratching. You could scratch yourself on the moon with this bad boy. I couldn't believe it. I said, where, where have I let you down? About six inches ago. Oh, bitch! <laughs> we had an argument. I knew it was a bad argument because all the pets left the building, which is impressive because I have goldfish. <laughs> <laughs>
point. We got to the point, and I said, listen, listen, it's me, all this, yes, or the dildo. You know what she said? She picked the dildo, didn't she? I said, what can that do that I can't, apart from banging nails? <laughs> She's like, get out! Get out of the house! Now, she went to slap me, but I'm a man, and I held my ground. I'm not going to get slapped by the likes of you. This is my house, I pay for it. I'm a man, I'm going to stand my ground. Then she picked up the dildo, and I ran like a scared child into the night. <laughs> if this thing hits me, I'm going to get concussion! Jesus! So I left the house. <laughs> so I left the house. And once she'd gone to work, I snuck back in. I thought, I'm going to get the last laugh here, right? I'm going to take everything. I'm going to take the tables, the chairs, the beds, the cups. Anything that wasn't nailed down was coming with me. I'm going to leave her with an empty house and a dildo. She has somewhere to sit, right? <laughs> so she phones me up. She goes, what am I supposed to do with an empty house and a dildo? I said, I would do what anyone else would do in that situation. Claim squatter's rights. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I got kicked out of the house. So I phoned my mum. I'll finish on this. I phoned my mum to tell her everything that happened. And I thought my mum would be understanding, but you know what she did? She turned around and said, what a disappointment. Oh. Oh. Uh, if only you had a bigger dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I tell you, this has been wonderful tonight. I've been Big D Archer. Follow me on Facebook. And enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that round of applause. Okay then. So, time for another act. This next act is called Juliana Heng. She is from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, and she is a founding member of the I Laugh KL Comedy Show and also one of the founding members of the Parky Comedy Rakyat. Haven't got a clue if I'm saying any of that right in the nicest way. I don't care that much. I can't say most things right, so you know what freaking chance have I got with that? But yeah, she's really good. I've seen a few of her things, freaking banging. Really happy that she was up for doing this. So without any further ado, Juliana Heng. Who is up next, please? Please come to stage, Juliana Heng. Come on, Juliana. Heng. Good luck. <laughs> stop, stop. I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Any one of you been to Kuala Lumpur before? Yeah. Awesome. For those of you who haven't been, you have not missed much. We are just the Birmingham of Asia. <laughs> this is the first joke I told at UK Immigration. I have autism. Autism happens when one part of the brain grows faster than others. For me, it's my forehead. <laughs> when I was five years old, I have not started speaking. My mom was worried about me, so she brought me to see a doctor. Doctor! Look at my baby. Is she deaf, mute, or just stupid? The doctor did some diagnosis on me and said, Mrs. Heng, don't worry. Your daughter is just like a proton car. The power window to her brain does not work. I believe you are wondering what a proton car is. <laughs> it is Malaysia's national car that we are still learning to be proud of. <laughs> For 30 years, the power window still doesn't work. We purposely made it that way so that Singaporeans won't claim it. <laughs> this got a way bigger laughter in Singapore. <laughs> because of my power window problem, I am a bit slow. In a room like this, when you all listen to jokes, you will laugh immediately. I will laugh a bit later. 
at home. For those of you who not laugh, don't worry. You are just like me. Speaking about laughter, according to laughteronlineuniversity.com, there are 15 types of laughter ranging from the softest to the loudest. As an autistic, I can only pick up three types of laughter. The first one goes like this. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> That's the real laughter. The second laughter goes like this. <laughs> it's the polite laughter where you're thinking, you suck, <laughs> but I pity you. And the third type of laughter goes like this. The UK immigration laughter. <laughs> People can be unkind at times. I once had a boss who told me, Juliana, you don't look autistic. I told him, that's okay. You don't look like a boss. <laughs> People also tell me, Juliana, you have autism. Does that mean that you have commitment issues and you're unable to hold down a full-time job? That's not true. I am having my current job for two years already. <laughs> Thank you. I am a full-time part-timer. <laughs> All I'm saying is being unemployed and staying broke takes a lot of commitment. <laughs> Any unemployed here? Okay, no worries. <laughs> and the thing is, people ask me, okay, Juliana, you have autism. Does that mean that you cannot drive? That's not true. I am a very conservative driver. My maximum speed limit is 50 miles per hour only. <laughs> on the oncoming lane. <laughs> She's bloody dead! couple of isolation ready programs for you, isolation friendly programs for you if you like. First of all, there is Come Dine With Me, Myself and I. There is the BBC's new show, hit show, The On Your One Show. And also, there is 8 out of 10 cats are not allowed to be in a room together because social distancing only allows two people at a time. Cop Comic was here. Not literally here, because that would be illegal at the moment. But that is his tag. The next act is, once again, lovely fucking dude. Just a lovely guy to just chill and have a, just to just sit and have a chat with, to be honest. And I don't like talking to most people, to be completely honest. This social distancing malarkey, I feel like I've been practicing it for about the last seven years. But he is one person I do enjoy talking to. Um, he hosted the Phoenix Comedy Club the last time I was there. He was the one who actually talked to the promoters and made it so that I could um, host the night as well, although that was cancelled because of this really selfish virus. But anyway, <laughs> everyone, I can't hear you, but put your hands together in silent claps for the wonderful cop comic, Jasink. <laughs> Mine's Jasper. Two syllables. Yeah, easy, right? Just the two syllables. Jasper. 
How many ways can you get that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you can think of one. Can't you? Just pump. Guess what I've been called at work? Jizz pump. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you say it a certain way, jizz pal, it's the kind of thing that some of us might buy off the internet. <laughs> it's your semen base friend. <laughs> it's the kind of stuff that helps you, you know. It will help you. It cleans. It sucks. It blows. It dries. <laughs> and if you order one before five o'clock, you'll get the free travel jizz pump. <laughs> Does come in handy, trust me. I took the long way around tonight. <laughs> I work in a bank. Sorry. <laughs> it's a really easy job, honestly, so easy. All I do is phone people up and propel the myth that money is real. <laughs> and as we all know, <laughs> so I phone you up. I sell you a bank account. I help you with a credit card. I help you prosper by demanding you take a loan. <laughs> now, I'm not going to tell you which bank I work for, okay, because I might not be able to go back tomorrow. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Mm -hmm. It rhymes with Santander. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking my boss in the background. He's currently typing something out. <laughs> yeah something <laughs> so I've got a super easy job honestly I'm not gonna lie it is literally the world's easy job yeah what makes it difficult is Karen anyone here call Karen tonight <laughs> thank fuck for that <laughs> <laughs> right so I've got to call Karen up and help her prosper but no mm. Karen reads the Daily Mail <laughs> <laughs> Karen thinks there's queues of immigrants waiting at Calais to rape her. <laughs> <laughs> it does work, doesn't it? Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. She is. Karen doesn't trust banks. Doesn't like them. Honestly, I don't know why. She doesn't like banks. She'd rather put her money under the bed, under the mattress. So it soaks up the piss from her incontinent husband's cock. <laughs> <Trudy. laughs> like I say, Karen, you know who Karen is. You've met her before. She thinks her Princess Diana wallpaper is never going out of fashion. <laughs> and it isn't. She's still got it. So I've got to phone Karen up. I've got to sell her some of this shit. I've got to tell her. It's a hard job, especially when she thinks I'm calling about a fucking takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Karen, it's Jasper from your bank. <laughs> no, it's not, I don't believe you. <laughs> Karen, honestly, it's me, it's Jasper. We spoke last year. You said you wanted to talk to me about a credit card, so here I am. Who? <laughs> No, it's just, pal, I promise you. From your bank, you told me to call you. I didn't order a curry. <laughs> so, Karen, it's just, pal, from your bank. You've asked me to call you. It tells me so in my words. Here I am. Jeff? No, just, pal. Josh? There's two syllables to my name, right? Two. Jess. I'm going to make it easier for you to be successful saying two syllables, Karen. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut my name in half. Mm -hmm. That increases your success rate by 100%. You can call me Jazz. Jizz? <laughs> it is Jazz, Karen. And I'm calling you today to tell you about a credit card. I don't want a credit card. Why not? Don't believe them. What's wrong? Well... Don't really want one. You sure? You told me you did. Yeah, but they encourage immigrants to settle in the UK. <laughs> it's just a credit card. Yeah, and they carry AIDS. Oh. What, a piece of plastic can give you AIDS? No, the immigrants. I read about it. Okay, okay. Are you sure you don't want to come in and see me? 
Yeah, this is my training kicking out. You sure you don't want to come in and see me? I can help you make money from what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Take one of our credit cards. No. By now, my ninja skills have kicked in, yeah? <laughs> all those weeks, months of objection handling, we've all been there, objection handling course, it's all kicking in, yeah? Unagi. It's like a, it's like a sixth sense, it's coming back to me. So, Karen, can you give me one reason why you're not gonna come and see me for me to tell you how we can make you prosper? Karen says, yeah. You're just propelling a myth. It's a man-made construct. It's an abstract thing, money. It doesn't exist. It's just bits of paper. You've got lots of bits of paper. And you want me to give you my bits of paper. Then you're gonna make me borrow your bits of paper after you've sold it to make more bits of paper and you're gonna take bits of paper off me for me to borrow my own bits of paper that I gave to you. Can I call you next year, Karen? <laughs> hard work. I said it was easy, but it's hard. But you know what? It is easy. Unless you're a bricklayer. I mean, is a bricklayer going to have to do what I've got to do? Is a bricklayer going to be at work thinking to himself, I better shave, better tuck my shirt in, better look presentable? No. A bricklayer is thinking, hat fits. Trousers don't, arse is hanging out, check. <laughs> Happy days. Is his manager, or her manager, is his or her manager going to make them take their work home with them? Take their work home with them? No, they're not. Are you going to really mix cement in your toilet bowl? <laughs> no, probably not. Are you really going to get on the bus home, carry all them bricks with you? Probably not. I mean, they would fit in that bit that they've made for the shopping trolleys, <laughs> but then you can't sit next to it, because they're for people that can't get to the back of the bus. So someone's gonna nick your bricks. <laughs> you ain't taking your work home with you. What about one-to-ones? I'm telling you, my one-to-one -one takes three hours to prepare. Three. I've only got to do one a week, but it takes three hours to prepare for this one-to-one. -one. Spreadsheets, Word documents, Excel documents, flip charts, pie charts, every kind of chart known to man. And I'm thinking to myself, what's a bricklayer going to do in a one-to-one? -one? So, Gaz, how'd you get on this week? Yeah, son. How was it? Yeah. What are you predicting? What are you projecting for next week? What, you know, how are you going to help someone next week prosper? See that sand? <laughs> See that water? <laughs> See that cement? Gonna mix it all up for you. Oh yeah, 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 then what? See them bricks? Gonna slap them all on there. I'm gonna make a wall. That's great, that is, Cass, that's great, that is. So what's your prediction? Well, I'm gonna make a wall. Next week, I'm gonna make another one. My job. Thank you. <laughs> And just so you all know as well, uh, if you look on the page, on the YouTube page that this is on, there will be uh, a link to follow for a Just Giving page to donate money towards the equipment, towards everything we need in regards to the COVID crisis. Um, you know, just obviously go towards the NSS and that. Um, just to give them as much help as possible, because let's be honest, people complain about our country, but we have free healthcare, we have a lot of things that a lot of other countries don't have and that does we shouldn't take that for granted we should donate some money we should help do our thing do whatever we can don't put yourself in a position where you know you're unsure about buying stuff or you're unsure about you know look after yourself first it's important but if you've got spare money you know a couple of quid anything at all throw it over everyone does that and that's a lot of money to help for the nhs and every thursday 8 p.m for the nhs and for the key workers make sure you're outside get some clapping on the go get your kids involved get some pans for them do it it's nice man everyone needs that little moment of togetherness which is what i was hoping to achieve with this this is what you know the, that thing every thursday is achieving it's nice it's nice so just do it
If you can, donate some money. If you can't, show your support in whatever way you can, basically. We're all in this together. All right then, so we have another act. This is a guy that I've seen many a times around the circuit. Such a lovely guy as well. Um, he's not too sure if he's actually going to be doing stand-up anymore, but in all honesty, because I'm so happy he was up for putting something on here, I'm hoping that it's going to get everyone to like it and he'll realise, maybe maybe I should do this comedy thing. Maybe I should keep on it. So everyone out there, watch this next video. Tell the guy how fucking good he is at it. And hopefully we'll see him around a bit more. But either way, lovely fucking dude, lovely guy. I give you Rory Jones, people. Hello, Pedder! Got it right! All day long I've been saying, don't say Bedworth, don't say Bedworth, don't say Bedworth. I didn't. So doing a gig in front of 300 people is really good for my constipation. Now, I don't really, you don't really want to know this, but I had my first poo in three days today. Yeah, it's really great to clear the backlog. <laughs> yes, my name is Rory Jones and I'm very proud of and very protective of and I hate when people get it wrong. And for instance, last week a bloke came up to me and he said, Hello, RJ. I whacked him on the chin. Yeah, that was my initial reaction. <laughs> so, if you don't like jokes like that, this next hour is going to drag. I'm telling you. <laughs> to tell you a little bit about myself, I suffer with really bad sciatica. I have a curvature of the spine and also a trap nerve between my shoulder blades. Yeah, that's my backstory. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I have a really high pH level and I'm also addicted to going in and out of different countries. I'm an alkaline borderholic. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got back from Buckingham Palace and uh, while I was down out there, I, I bummed one of the princes. Yeah, I won't be doing that again in a hurry. <laughs> I like my coffee, like I like my women. Really rich, but with a hint of bitterness. <laughs> I uh, recently bought a watch that counts how many calories I burn, staring at women's boobs. Yeah, I'm really glad I bought that tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the supermarket earlier on, and I was at the self-checkout, and I thought, I look amazing. <laughs> yeah, that punchline arrived by Skype, but anyway. <laughs> Although it's not been a very good time for me recently, especially with Valentine's Day, because my wife uh, left me. Aww. I know, and I just, uh, the day she left, I just finished my favourite jigsaw, and she came in and she threw it all over the living room. Yeah, it's been two months now, and I've only just been able to begin picking up the pieces. <laughs> but we've uh, been rowing quite a lot and she kept saying to me stuff like uh, Rory, you never look me in the eyes during sex unless I wake up <laughs> <laughs> and then we rowed another time after I caught her waxing a vagina in public oh, I really tore her off a strip <laughs> And then there was another time when I, um, somebody super glued my ex-wife's vagina and uh, I told her to report it to the police, but she preferred to remain tight-lipped. <laughs> <laughs> and I know what you're thinking, why do you keep talking about your ex-wife's vagina? Yeah, there's no need to labour your point. <laughs> Anatomical humour there for you. Um, then I thought myself, because you know, it weren't all bad, because we've got a three-year-old son and uh, when he was one, we had him measured for his first pair of shoes, and he was a size 4G, which meant that he could also pick up a really good mobile phone signal. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also got a 16-year-old from my first marriage, and I thought to myself, I don't want any more children now, you know, I'm 28. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I thought uh, I'd better do something about it, and I saw an advertisement for a really cheap vasectomy. I thought, for five pounds, that's a snip. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I couldn't get it done in the end, because I missed the cut-off. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought to myself, I can't be uh, moping around too much. 
So I thought I'm going to uh, try internet dating. And as a matter of fact, last week I was taken out by a stunner. The policeman called it a taser. <laughs> <laughs> But I've actually uh, got a new girlfriend, and she's from uh, South America. Ooh. Yeah, no, uh, she doesn't keep me very warm at night, though. Wow, she, she's a Chilean. <laughs> and uh, I've got to admit, she's not the brightest uh, woman in the world. I mean, for instance, she thinks a loophole is something you clean the toilet with. <laughs> and also, I fancy some uh, beer recently, so I sent her out and asked her to get me a tray of Budweiser. And she came back with a tray of Bud Light. And I said, well, what did you buy this for? She said, oh, I thought it'd be easier to carry. <laughs> <laughs> but even though we've not been going out for very long, I mean, it gets me emotional, but she really is my rock. Oh, no. yeah, I'll only allow her in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> not really. We have a, I've actually got a little nick nickname for her. I call her my wonder stuff. Ah, she's the size of a cow. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I'm going to treat her. I said, well, how would you like to go on holiday? She said, can we go back to my home country and visit the baby llamas? I says, OK, I'll pack a bag. <laughs> <laughs> and then I decided to impress her even more. I took her on a cruise. And I got up really early the one morning to try and get us a sunbed for the day. But when I went downstairs, the whole place was swarming with German men. I thought, blimey, it's all hands on deck. <laughs> <laughs> Can I play here every week? It's rough. But anyway, I, um, then I took it to Asia, where we experienced every sort of weather you can think of. Bahrain. <laughs> and then we went to a pop concert in Southeast Asia. I mean, how can I describe it? Yeah, the band were great. Yeah, Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we like to take a little holiday by ourselves, and I went on by, by myself to Amsterdam, where I slept with a Dutch prostitute who insisted on paying half. <laughs> now, I was a bit worried about this gig this evening, which has been really so far, but I thought, so I'm going to relax and I'm going to watch a DVD uh, called The History of Tampax. It's a period drama. <laughs> and then I watched a DVD called Before Circumcision. It was the uncut version. <laughs> and then somebody recommended that I watch the Harry Potter films. So I went to buy them on DVD and they're really cheap at the moment. Yeah, just a quidditch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, be honest, to be honest, I never know which one's which. You know, I do get them muggled up. But anyway. <laughs> I've got a brilliant joke about amnesia. I've got a couple of friends of mine <laughs> that really this is good, but anyway, that, that really enjoy spooning in bed. Well, they are both heroin addicts. <laughs> <laughs> and me and my new girlfriend have uh, both decided we're going to start smoking spliffs. Yeah, it was a joint decision. <laughs> and I can't remember the last time I took ketamine. It was oh. <sighs> <laughs> and I should be really upset about the fact that somebody broke into my house last week and stole all of my Viagra, but I've got no hard feelings. <laughs> I, used to, I, I used to be a pharmacist, and the one day I substituted a heroin addict's methadone for fairy liquid, and it was clean within a fortnight. <laughs> uh, they've invented a, a date rape drug for rappers called Ro Hip Hop Not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of friends of mine, I've got a friend of mine who's a female jockey, and the one day she told me to put all of my money on a horse she was riding called Roll Up Cigarette, but I didn't have enough tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of 
Friends again. Did uh, the sitcom Friends, anybody used to watch that back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. Because Jennifer Aniston was recently uh, refused entry to a New York nightclub by a bank that hated her character in Friends, and she's now suing him for racial discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> The Flintstones, the Flintstones have been charged with child cruelty after they were caught skimming pebbles across a lake. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like my music, and last week I got right to the front of a Heaven 17 concert. In fact, I've never been closer. <laughs> I try to understand. I wasn't sure whether to, take, to tell that joke that this evening, but I, to, I couldn't resist the temptation. <laughs> <laughs> I've started recruiting for a Bon Jovi tribute act. I've not got all the members yet, but I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Elton John went on a pub crawl this afternoon. Now he collapsed. I'm still standing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm better than I've ever been. <laughs> And I'm going back to my ex-wife again. No, I'm not going back to my ex-wife again. I've got my girlfriend to go. But anyway. <laughs> back in the good times, uh, the one day we had some, after a row, we had some lovely makeup sex. And now we're banned from boots. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, back in the good times, the one day we had some lovely morning sex. Although that did upset the other people at the funeral. <laughs> Um, good news though, last week I uh, entered a competition for premature ejaculation and I came first. <laughs> I did a whole lot better in that than I did, than I did in this year's World Direction Championships where I failed to make the finals. I could only manage a semi. <laughs> so you laugh at that, the year before I did even worse, I flopped. <laughs> but listen. I'm going to hand you back to Dougie. Listen, listen support this night again, because Dougie's a hell of a bloke. He puts down a hell of an axe. Woo! I've got to go, I've got to go and, and go around and do my Rasta Fairy friend's hair. Yeah, I'm dreading it. <laughs> Fair enough, you've been brilliant. I've been Rory Jones. Good night. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Rory Jones, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>Can't believe it, guys. We're, we're coming up to the end already. We've got one more act left for you. Um, I haven't seen. I hadn't seen a lot of her stuff before. I've seen a few things now. Once again, another person I'm chuffed was up for, you know, taking part in this and doing it. And this, we've had a really good response to it as well because of some of the people that are in it and some of the people that are sharing it. Once again, let me say thank you to Joe Pitt, to Coventry Comedy Festival. And anyone else who's sharing it by this point as well, any of you guys that are sharing this, all the comedians, in gen not just the ones of, that have been doing this today, but all the comics in general, they've been really supportive talking. We've been talking together, trying to figure out different things to do. It's really nice. Comedy is a community. So it's really nice that people are pulling together to try and do things. So with that being said, let's welcome our last act for the night. Last time you'll see me until the next episode. Unless I put something in after her act to say bye, which I probably will, so ignore that bit. But anyway, without any more further ado, ado, please welcome Georgie Morell. Hello, Rose. Hello. Some comedy to do up here. You can stay there the whole time, Rose. Yeah, great. Good. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. This is terrific. Oh, I love you all. It's exactly what we need in January at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck you, January. <laughs> your tax and your lack of vitamin D. I'm so sick of it. Um, I'm so tired. Speaking of tired, babe. Babe. Did you get a break? Yeah, he got a break, got a break. Get this man a rosé to keep him going. God bless you, my love. Oh, it's too much fun, isn't it? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck with a woodchuck woodchuck wood? Chuck, wood, chuck, wood? <laughs> They're waiting. <laughs> Shouldn't do that really. He could totally fuck my set completely, couldn't he? Really? <laughs> oh, it's oh, I quite like that. Hey! No, that, yeah, fuck you, January. Let's 
crack on. I am um, so, so tired. So tired. Do you get to that tired? Where if somebody showed you a poster of a missing cat, you'd burst into tears. That's where I'm at, just ready to lose my shit. So this is beautiful, this is perfect. I'm not taking my dress off, by the way, just to, sorry to disappoint. <laughs> well, okay, okay, cool. It's all right, apparently, it's all right. I don't know, what's it take? We'll do a little bit about me, get us going, get us rolling, as comedians do, and it is my favourite fucking subject. So I was an ugly child. Give us a cheer if you were an ugly child. The whole bloody room was a hit. Welcome to Vauxhall indeed. I was, I was an ugly child, so ugly. I was what if you, you know when you see a kid and you're like, oh, it's not ugly. Unfortunate looking, I think it's a polite way to put it, you know what I mean? Unfortunate. When you see them and you think, I hope they're funny or clever, because they're not going to get by on that. <laughs> that was me, it was an epic mess, absolute car crash. I was really tiny, really skinny, I had buck teeth, I had big glasses. I was sort of a combination between um, a goblin and that girl in the ring. <laughs> that was me, that's where I was at. Oh, by the way, if you didn't cheer, are you essentially saying you were an attractive child? That's fine, that's fine. Humble brag, humble brag. Know what you're handling, do you know what I mean? I was a very attractive child, like, um, that Macaulay Culkin, the kids from Stranger Things, or, um, oh, Madeline McCann. Yeah. Uh, what? Don't start groaning. We've got 15 minutes left. All right? She was cute, it's a compliment. It's not mean if it's a fact. She's not in, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody awkward, wouldn't it, sweetheart? I wasn't just an ugly child, though. I wasn't just an ugly child. Um, uh, I was also a disabled child, hence the booking for tonight. <laughs> but don't get, don't, don't go, don't worry about it, sweetheart, don't worry. I can only see out of one eye, and the one that works is a bit sort of temperamental, a bit part-time, part-time as an eye. Don't get hung up on it, sweetheart, don't get hung up on it, it's just a teeny-weeny disability, teeny-weeny disability. Not a big deal, not a big deal, I'm fine, I'm fine, I mean, ha, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was me, I'm sorry, wouldn't we? That wasn't very nice. Don't worry, baby, I've got this. I'm a professional disabled. <laughs> <laughs> but was, so it, so the big secret with disability is basically, if you're disabled, you're fine, you're fine. We've got the disability, we get on with it. It's all everyone else that makes it a bit of a problem, isn't it? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Able-bodied freaks, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Or as I call them, 2020 pricks. <laughs> and it's also the year 2020. This shit writes itself, babe. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it was fine, it fine. And do you know what I say to any... Have I got some fellow disabled in? Yeah. Christ, like a call to arms, isn't it? We found a leader, let's go. <laughs> it's actually use it. Use it. This is my advice. Use it for everything you can. Vlog the shit out of it to get stuff. Alright? <laughs> for instance, I have one of those parking badges. Means I can park anywhere. I don't even drive, sweetheart. <laughs> I can wear a monocle and justify it. Think about that. And my favourite one as well is I can pretend to not see people I don't want to talk to. <laughs> Hi Georgie, it's like, oh who is that? Hi, and I'm gone. <laughs> and of course um, the disabled toilets. Fucking cracking, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Nine times out of ten, they're beauties, aren't they? They're lovely, lots of space. Full length mirror, you can watch yourself poop, whatever you do in there. <laughs> there was such a nice one once at a temp job I had. I had a wank in it. <laughs> oh, you know, when in Rome, you know what I mean? I, I had a few groans, don't you groan? This world took my eye, it will not take my right to wank where I want. <laughs> yeah, and good night. She's gone. <laughs> So yes, I was a disabled child as well, but yeah, what was I say? Ugly child, yes, I was an ugly child, that was far worse, it really was. Yeah, absolute mess. I swear to God, 
My mum, right, I was so ugly, I swear, she tried to pick up other kids at the school gate. Like she was trading me in for another model, do you know what I mean? Like, well, I'll take this cute blonde one that looks like Madeline, come on. <laughs> Fuck it, maybe that's where she is, I don't know, my mum's acting. <laughs> this isn't Portugal, I don't know. <laughs> Go on, strap in, it's happening. <laughs> And I, used to, I swear as well, my parents used to walk about 10 yards behind me as if they, they, wanted, they didn't want people to know I was with them, I was that ugly. Or hoping I would get like kidnapped or stolen or something. But I was too fuck ugly, so it never happened, you know what I mean? Too damn ugly. But um, it, I think my dad was hoping for a sort of um, Taken situation. You know the film Taken? Yeah. Liam Neeson, his daughter gets stolen because she's a muppet and he's to go bloody find her, that one. Yeah, it would be that sort of scenario, but daddy wouldn't come and get me. <laughs> Leave them to it, really. And to be fair to my daddy, he's not Liam Neeson, ex-CIA, double R'd man. His, his name's Tony. He's a, he's a housing surveyor, and he has, he has a moustache. So the worst he could threaten the kidnappers is, uh, I'll downvalue your London property so it's hard for you to remortgage. <laughs> Pretty scary in the current climate, I think we can all say on that. Absolutely, was so ugly. I know what you're all thinking. Oh, hang on, they found me. I know what you're thinking, sweetheart. The years have been kind. <laughs> or not, whatever. I don't know, what does it take? It's nothing to do with years, sweetheart. Basically, I got to about 17. My mum took a look and was like, shit, Tony, it is not improving. If anything, she's getting uglier. So let's throw money at it until it's pretty, basically. Braces, steroids, whatever it fucking took. And if you don't believe how ugly I was, true story, I was so ugly, so ugly. When I was 11 years old, I met Jimmy Savile. And even he wasn't interested. Like, don't you groan, okay? It happened to me. Tough on a kid's ego, that. <laughs> Remember, it's not mean if it's a fact. <laughs> I love my job. Anyway, one thing I do know about me, one thing I know about me for sure, I love, love, love gossiping. Give me a cheer if you like gossip. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, beautiful! Oh, my people! Religion! Love gossiping. I love hearing it. I love giving it. I love eating it. Just num 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 gossip. I'm like a crackhead who needs a fix every day, but instead of smack, it's just like wondering what happened between Caroline Flack and that guy. What did he say? What did he say to set her off? Know what I mean? Bloody Flack, not a loss, is it, to our TV screens? Just too bad. Grunky. Love gossiping. Absolutely love gossiping. And um, it's, been, it's been royals at the moment. It's more gossip than I can bloody handle, crikey. Harry and Meghan, just stop. I can't handle it. The scandal of it. And even in the papers, 17 pages the Daily Mail gave to it when the story dropped. It's ridiculous. Even Madeline didn't get that many. I mean, they both quit their families in very different ways, though. Very different. All right, no more about Madeline. It's just not her. <laughs> Harry and Meghan, Meghan, she just couldn't handle it, could she? She couldn't handle being a royal, that's fine. It looks bloody ridiculous, doesn't it? It looks like a ridiculous job. And the press were mean to her, and she got upset. Oh my God, the press were mean to me. They said my outfit looked shit. It did look shit. <laughs> we are gonna talk afterwards, sweetheart. You, me, and a rose, it's gonna be beautiful. It did look shit. Not mean if it's a fact, Meghan. Oh my God, look shit. I'm making sure. Fair enough, get a bit upset, but suing the press? I mean, consider yourself fortunate, because they killed the last princess. So, <laughs> if anything, she got out of it well. <laughs> Don't you dare say it's too soon for Diana Jones. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> she hit it. That's broken. <laughs> um, one person who is very, very grateful for, uh, I don't know if you know about this, is incredibly grateful for uh, the Harry and Meghan story dropping, was the day before, Zara Tyndall, the Queen's great-granddaughter, did we hear about this? Got done for uh, speeding, yep, speeding, she lost her license. She was doing seven, uh, 90 at 70 mile per hour. To be fair, she was just trying to get away from Prince Andrew, so. <laughs> <laughs> You'd break the speed of sound, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean, to get away from that guy. There's a, um, we'll finish up on this. There's a, there's a very good reason that I gossip before, uh, before anyone starts judging me. It's a very good reason, okay? So uh, 10 years ago, my, my one eye 
stopped working. I was completely blind for a year. Oh. Oh. I love that. I was completely blind for a year. And I moved back with my parents. The doctors didn't know if I would see again. It was a really tough time, really tough time. And um, my old mates would come and visit me and, you know, keep me, keep me abreast of what was going on. It was, you know, great for them to come around and talk to me. And my mate Drew came around. Drew's a great friend. He's my best friend now. Great guy. He's, uh, he's really nice. He's really tall. He's six foot five. He can, like, reach stuff. And he always lends me money. He's a terrific friend. And he, um, and he's, uh, and he wanted to cheer me up. Oh, best way I can describe Drew, actually. <laughs> The best way I can describe Drew is, he likes to play a game called cock or ball. <laughs> Somebody knows how to play it down there. <laughs> cock or ball, basically, is when a, um, when a lad basically undoes his zipper and shows a bit of his cock or his ball, and you have to guess which it is. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger, by the way, as you know, it's his game. However, Drew, because he's such a nice guy, such a nice guy, he came up with his own version of the game for me, because I couldn't see. He used to scratch his cock or his ball and then make you sniff his fingers to guess which one. Sweet! Oh, God. If you see him tonight, you run, okay? You just run. We're coming at you like that. Modru. Um, and I was, I was really good at it. I got it right every time. The other senses do get strong. <laughs> Now just drink. And um, he wanted to cheer me up and he'd said all the usual things, all the usual shit like, you know, uh, everything happens for a reason, little George. Um, you'll, you'll laugh about this one day, evidently, sweetheart. And then it hits him and he's like, oh, oh, I know what I can tell her, a bit of bloody gossip. He said, Georgie, do you remember Steffi that we were at uni with? Yeah, I remember Steffi. Right, Steffi, she had a boyfriend called Dougie, where well, she's going to marry him. Even though he slept with her sister, she's still going to marry him and she's going to make her sister bridesmaid. Mm! I knew he came when I heard that. <laughs> oh, nummy, nummy gossip. It's beautiful. Because nothing, this is from me to you, Vauxhall, nothing will make you feel better when you're blind and your life's shit and you don't know if you'll see again, is hearing about other people's misery. That's <laughs> what we need to keep us going, keep us going. I'll, I'll finish on one thing, you guys have been an absolute delight. This has been a pleasure. One last thing about gossiping, okay? Bit of advice. You can't gossip about Ariana Grande anymore. Oh, I'm not oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's alright, the punchline doesn't matter. <laughs> oh my god. Right, should we start it again? <laughs> Can't gossip about Ariana Grande anymore. Thanks, terrorism. Oh. See, it's fucked, isn't it? It's ruined. She could get caught fingering a kitten and she'd get away with it. See, terrorism ruins everything. Well, except her career. Hmm. <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. Whoever yelled out, come and find me afterwards, because that was terrific. This stuff really does right itself. <laughs> Guys, you've been an absolute pleasure and a delight. I've been George Morrell. Please welcome Rose back to the stage. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Thank you. Put your hands together. You've been fucking dazzling. And lovely George Morrell! You're fucking funny. Well then guys, I think that's it. That's it. That's everything done. We're all done now. So I would say, everyone, go back to what you're doing. If you need something to entertain yourself, remember, WrestleMania is on this weekend. WrestleMania doesn't stop for anything, baby. It's going to be, you know, empty arena with no people there over two days. And it probably shouldn't be going on. But still, it's there. It's there. But all you guys, stay safe. Look after each other. Be kind. Don't be a twat. Stand two, more than two metres away. Take care. Love you all. Much love. Peace.